I wouldn't be surprised if Tex comes out this second leg and keeps the ball for as long as possible. Um, we've seen the formation here coming out from both of these two players. I think it's going to be a 4 2 3 1 from Tex. And um, I'm not too sure what formation it's actually. Full 3 3 for a minute there, but I'm yeah, sure I think it'll gonna... probably be changed on the custom tactic. I imagine it's going to be a 4 2 3 1. Maybe a full triple two from Marcus Gomes. Well, here we go then. Second leg of round two of Swiss style format here in Singapore. And it's Marcus Gomes up against F2 Tex. Tex winning two goals to nil at the moment. For the man ranked number one on those global series rankings on the Xbox side of things. Has Can to get an early start. He win three foot Champions Cups, Richard. Oh, it'd be unthinkable uh, coming into FIFA 19, but then you see the level that Tex has got and the consistency that he's shown from September to March. And I wouldn't put it past him. He's got two more foot champs cups that he could potentially win. He qualified for the E-Champions League. He's going to be in the grand final, the World Championships. Most definitely. 7,545 Global Series ranking points to his name. There'd be about like 20 people that would, would love to split that up between them <laughs> and to try and get themselves on the road to the playoffs. Unfortunately, they're all his points and he's, he's earned them all. What can Marcus Gomes offer us here now? Needs to, needs to see some sort of attacking prowess from him. He needs to go forward and get himself a goal ASAP. And that margin obviously closes down to only one goal and maybe he might have a bit more confidence for that. As Ramos picks up on this right-hand side, he's on a right-back as well. Of course, the back post cross is always still a matter that people want to watch out for, whether it's an El Tornado or just a simple cross all the way across. This is Mbappe now, a simple drag back for him. Ramos is quite far forward. Yeah, nice little drag back from Mbappe. I think Tex were expecting the El Tornado. It just gave him a little bit of room in and around the box, but you see Rio Ferdinand again. So aggressive in his tackling, he's quick, he's strong in the defensive third. And that's one thing that Maldini does lack a little bit, that 95 Maldini. He's only got 87 strength and 80 aggression. So he's a little bit lower than you'd, you'd like. Well, here's Tex now, Cristiano Ronaldo, and he's actually just toying with, uh, with two players there as he comes into the box with Mbappe now. It's going to be that Hullet that does intercept, we'll see that. I'm like on moment, Hull at 94 rated. And a force to be reckoned with in the midfield. Positive signs, though, from Marcus Goins. We saw there, edge of the box. You know, we've been speaking about that drag back he did. Unfortunately, fell into the hands of Rio Ferdinand, who's been insane for Tex. You know, you spoke to him earlier, Richard. You said, why is he involved? You just said he's just simply good. When Marcelo got the ball there, there was simply no passing option. That's just through the pressing of Tex. There were no option for Marcus to go for unless he went all the way back to his centre-halves. Which, when you are playing against someone like that and the only option you've got is to go backwards, how demotivating is that? As a football fan, you're watching your team play and the only thing that you can do is just go backwards over and over again. You become aggravated. It's the exact same thing for FIFA players. Neymar into Vieira. This is Tex now, and you have to say, just do not concede Marcus Gomes, or it's going to be a bit of a mountain to climb. And unfortunately, that is exactly what he's done. Mbappe again. again. Same play, same area, and a, basically another time green finish for him. F2 Tex is just... He's on another level right now. Um, who's going to be able to solve the Rubik's Cube? That is F2 Tex. People are trying to figure it out. They've got one side finish. They've got a yellow side finish, and they just... Spins it up. He goes, you know what? Yeah, there's a patch coming. I'm better now than I was before. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? And throws an extra player into the mix there as well. Whether it's an attacking player, someone in the midfield. Alongside, obviously, all the those points. I keep on talking about the Global Series points. Obviously, he's going to be playing the EPL finals with Liverpool. That's a dream for him. Multiple tournaments he's won as well. Two for Champions Cups this year, for Champions Cup last year. Like... You'd love to see just the amount of trophy. He must have a trophy cabinet back home already that's just been you filled so, slowly. Yeah. He's got a, a Club World Cup check. He's got a... Uh, and that was with Nicholas as well. Yeah. Here we go. Could this be four now? R9. In all the space in the world. Through the legs. Oh, oh, just picked up. In. But hey, there was no accuracy on that shot. It was just simple. Get your head down and put your laces through it. Yeah, just a low driven shot towards the near post and... Tell you what, if that had gone in, that's the ultimate stab in the back for Marcus Gomes. It's the ultimate demotivating blow. 
Lucky enough for him, he didn't concede. Get himself a goal back before half time, Mark Jones, but he needs to get the ball back first. Which Tex, of course, is not laying up. And this is crazy to see, you know, we, we also hype up a lot of players who are very good in the attack and they take the time away from tournaments to learn on their defensive side of the game, learn how to manage a game better. This is just, it's hard to get your head around. Marcus Gorm's just beat Megabit, one of the most free-flowing attacking players. Eight goals to three. I can't recall a shot on target from Marcus. He's not had a 85% or plus higher chance of, of scoring a goal. It's just simply because he hasn't been given been the time. He's been starved of the ball. He has. He's been given nothing to work with. When he does get it forward, he has to rush everything. Because there's no one forward. There's like two players forward. When Cristiano Ronaldo gets it, he's just pressured straight away. Also, when you don't have the ball, when you're playing against someone who's just keeping the ball so well against you, you panic when you've got it. You think, oh my God, I've got a chance, I've got a chance, yeah. I've got a chance. And then you rush, then you rush, then you rush. Then you end up squandering an opportunity that you had. You can see there, Tex getting a little bit annoyed the one time he gives the way a ball for a throw-in. Again, Look Marcus. at the possession, 62% possession, left-hand side of your screen just popped up there. As we're going to half-time, we'll see a bit more there. And see Marcus going to get a little bit frustrated there, just got to try and keep his cool. That's not going to help him. Arnheim will run down the wing that way. Is he going to try and play it? No, he's not. He's going to play into Hulley instead. Don't be surprised to see it go backwards, potentially, as well, if he needs to. Just watch 29. Number 29, Mbappe. Watch him move into the middle now. And the left-hand side, but he scored twice. And coming in on off the left, into the centre, kind of the semi-circle. On the edge of that box, and he'll just time green it. See, when you're playing against Tex, you can't let him get in this position. He's comfortable right now. He's happy to keep the ball. In that first 30 minutes of the first leg, you have to put him under pressure. I'm thinking back to when Razek beat him. What did he do? He put him under immense amounts of pressure. He made as him well. come out of his comfort zone. Also, you've got to be pretty much perfect, perfect yeah. in the attacking third. Whenever you're going forward, you have to be taking the chances. 65% possession. Marcus hasn't registered a shot in this game, and I think this game is pretty much wrapped up. We're going to jump over to Brasta Arte, uh, all the way from Portugal, coming over now versus Jerry Lyon. A little bit of a, a derby, Portugal versus Spain. And uh, I think we are, is it two goals apiece in this game? 2-2 two, two the score, and it's been a, a bit of a talking point, isn't it? Portuguese players in the FIFA eSports scene recently. Tuga with the dream storyline. Two events. And he's pretty much put himself, you might want to say, a grand final spot. We saw him in, I believe, with Bucharest. And, uh, semi final. And semi final, yep. yep. And then in Atlanta, they went two steps further. He won the semi final, won the final, made it all the way to the cross console final, picking up 1,500 Global Series ranking points. Now we see him. We'll see his good friend in action. Obviously, Tuga is actually competing in this event as well. Rastorato, on the other hand, we saw him at the beginning of the year at the, the Paris Games Week, the first LQE of the year. Then we've seen him at quite a few other events as well. Sporting Club de Portugal, of course, he is from. And one of the, the real standout players as well from that scene. The other side of that, JRA line, you speak of the big Spanish names in the scene. You speak of the, of course, back in the day, the Alfonso Ramos. But now in, in recent days, you're speaking of the, the Gravisons, you're speaking of JRA line and Doni. Los Higueres. Chechem's here as well. And you speak of how well these do. I remember last year, a big standout tournament for me was the playoff for JRA Line. We saw him there in Amsterdam. I think he finished six and one. He had a fancy, yeah, he did. He had a fantastic tournament there. I remember speaking to him then. He was like, just, my FIFA's just working for me. I was just playing so well. Dan Casello at right fullback. That'll be the 89, uh, Jacques Concello from Juventus. You got an upgrade with the Sevilla. Well, the Calcio A upgrades. This game is the second leg as well, we must recall. 2-2 the scores. We're about to hit half-time in this one, just as the Texan Marcus Gomes game did, which is 3-0 on aggregate now. As we said, I think that one could be near enough done. With the amount of goals that Texas scored, and from what we've seen so far, it's just been so hard for Marcus to do much there. And he'll go into to round number three at 1-1 if... Oh, sorry, unless he can pull back three goals, which will be an unbelievable storyline for the Australian. Added time of two minutes here. And we'll have a look at the possession, unless Rastorata's got one more. 
Ida up his sleeve, a few drag backs there as well. We saw oh, Lestikar, I think, as well, as well. Yeah, and Lester go into a couple of drag backs in the left for Keta just to create a, a sort of a half shooting chance here, or a half chance for the man from Portugal, but wasn't meant to be in the end. And now we can see the face cams in action for Rastarato. He's one, he's one seat to the right of Marcus Gomes. <laughs> Um, he was having a little watch, wasn't he, at the yeah. game earlier? I think behind uh, uh, Jaron is actually Los Chigueras. He's actually come out as a coach. We saw him at Gfinity, I believe, for the LQEs there. He came as a coach. Now, he's out in Singapore. I think anything to blag a free trip to, to Asia. Um, uh, why not? Of course, and he'll be coaching him throughout this tournament. You can just see there, Astarat on the bottom of your screen. You can see, of course, the Global Series rankings between the two as well. Yes, they might be sixth. What? They might be 62 spot for Jaro Lion, 13th for Rasta, but. When it comes to FIFA quality, anyone in that 100, in the top 100 side of, of Global Series rankings, anyone can beat anyone. I want to say 49 spots in between them. I think you could be right. It's like that GCSE maths. Qualification finally coming up for me. As you hear, I heard, uh, just heard a loud roar from the room to our left. There we go. Two of those uh, fake shots, I should say, inside. That's going to be a goal for Astorata. Two advanced fake shots into a drag back, played across, and it will be R9 that steps up and scores. And he might not be a starter for everyone, but he's still got the backing of the Portuguese FIFA player, Rastarata. Yeah, really nice here from the Rastarata. A couple of drag backs in and around the box. Such a simple skill move to, to execute there. Uh, half a drag back and then the full drag back executed from him. Little pass across the box, and then R9 slams it whole to reinstate that one goal lead on the uh, stroke of the 50th minute. Vieira to Pelé. It's Jero Lyon that needs a goal now. Oh, he's moving the ball so well. Oh, the idea there would have been a great finish if it came off for him. It was Pelé into CR7, but slightly too heavy, and it's going to be Neuer. But some players are still swaying towards as well, so it looks like the debate will be either, you mentioned that one player maybe using Yashin. We've got some Van der Sar fans as well in the building. Of course, David De Gea, team of the year, and maybe Manuel Neuer for one or two. A cues, uh, uh, I should say, a pause cued from JRA Lion. See, he's uh, got, got his headset in as well. Yeah, I didn't actually. notice that then. He's actually talking, I'm sure. Ronaldo oh, just forced it through there to Hullet. But Rastarata will be able to hear that, though. If he's in game chat. I'd love to see more of that. I want to see two players put the headset on and talk to each other in game against each other. And see what mind games you can yeah. get there, especially if it's a big heated game as well. That was Cristiano Ronaldo. It's all like an Ajax Danny. Get a drag back. Well, a, a few of the events I know this year do open mics, for example, the Edivise, yep. um, uh, the Superliga and stuff like that. So you can really hear the players' reaction and stuff like that. We had heart rate monitors before last year. That yeah. was an interesting little thing we, we Great had. Great as well. To see the kind of the pressure maybe that some players are feeling or how the body goes through a number of these massive games, especially when there's a lot of money up for grabs and contracts, so much up for, for state, really. One thing I'd like to see as well as this pause does come in, I think it'd be a, a very fun um, addition. The coaches get mic'd up. A little bit like boxing, when in between rounds where you get to go in and you get to hear the coaches talking to the players. Just let, let me hear what Kojo's saying. Let me hear what Will Pivers is saying to their to their respective players. It's going be interesting here because obviously we know that there's a number of coaches in, in FIFA Esports now, but... So like, well, I think it'd be fascinating what yeah, Abdi is yeah, saying yeah. to Pina. But, yeah, but when you when you ask a coach what they do, it's more just... No one really gives you an answer yeah. of what a, a FIFA coach does because everyone has a different style and everybody believes in different things where it's just calming down your player, letting them just vent out to you whether they're not happy about something or whether you're just you know, a former pro. So as you said, like a Romo Abdi who's got a lot of experience in the scene, right, play this formation now, try this, try that. I think that'll be fascinating though to, oh, to definitely. hear. Definitely, it'll be obviously some, a, a great step in the future. I'm sure that a number of events will do that as part of this FIFA 19 Global Series and heading into FIFA 20 as well. We approach the last 25 in-game minutes here. It's Rastarata that has got the advantage in round two of Swiss-style format. Is there a reply, though, from the Spaniard? Looking to just fashion a, a great opportunity here. He's keeping hold of the ball. He's waiting for Rastarata to put a player out of position. It's Neymar, who's just slightly come out there. OK, Mbappe, a ball roll. Back to Hullet. You can just see there, he's controlling his Hullet in Rastarata, and you can see Jero Lyon controlling his. Just trying to make sure there's someone around the edge of the box. There's no finesse coming in the edge of the box as well as 
You can just see the interchange of players constantly. Pele now, his turn. He simply had no options. He simply had no options inside the box there. Good bit of defending. It was very... It's a safe defending from Rastarata. He wasn't playing any plays out of position. He was moving from left to right. He, Hully used a lot in that little sequence there, but... Mbappe. Oh, no, surely not! Off oh, the post. You can see Los Ugueras find him as well. He thought it was in. Chance again. Attack not over though. Pele to Neymar. That would have been an unbelievable finish. Yeah, nice little flick just on the edge of the box there. Into the volley from Kylian Mbappe. Off the upright. The goalkeeper had moved the completely wrong way. They were left rooted. This is where game management's everything for Astor Arta. All those events you've been involved in this year. I'm sure you would have learned from them all. Now you can see how this game now is going to be the big question. He's leading three goals to two. I believe this will take him 2-0 and as well in Swiss style with Astor Arta. He does make a pause and maybe that's going to be some fresh legs for the remaining 10 minutes or so left in this one. I'm sure we'll jump over to another game after this one as well. That will be waiting to, to finish as well. Jan Cancelo just done enough there. Yeah, very strong there against Pele. From what we've seen, Jerry Lyon is all over Rosterata. He can't really create a lot of space in the final third. Jerry Lyon's pinning him back. And it's just chance after chance after chance for the Spaniard. If he can keep it like this, he'll be going on through. I think Swiss style kind of record for Rasterata. He's, he's always been confident in Swiss style. Makes it to the knockouts most of the time. It seems it's just, to make a quarter-final. Yeah, it's just that extra step on from that. Has he got enough? Gas, you would say, in the tank. There's a finesse from distance. Took a deflection. And I think Joe Lyon thought that was uh, flying to the back of the net there. We can see, obviously, Rasters changes now. Well, is he going to maybe bring on a midfielder? Yes, he will. He's going to bring on Modric, Pele as well, that 99. Of course, prime icon moment. Look at that bench as well. He's, he's, got Ebra. Well. he's even got that SBC Ebra. I mean, he's, he's so strong, he's Ebra. Probably behind Ronaldo, the best header of the ball in the game. Yep. In the attacking third, certainly. He's also, what, six foot five? He, he's such a threat. He's imposing in the box. And he's got five star skills. And he's quick. <laughs> he, he's got, he's the full package, that flashback Ebra. Going back to uh, his time, I think it was at PSG when he got a team of the year foot item. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He just seems like that kind of SBC that everyone's doing on weekend league as well. <laughs> he's easy to do and he's pretty dangerous as well. And then he just kicks out of play there, did Cristiano Ronaldo. He actually needs to get himself in the box. That's two massive players that you want in your attack, not involved in it. And then Mbappe and Ronaldo, it's R9. Yeah, speaking of that Ibra, he's probably, he's one of the most regretted SPCs that players haven't done. Him and David Luiz are the two that people think, oh, I wish I'd have done that. To see Tuga in the background as well, watching Rastorato, his fellow countryman. Trying to support him on. And it comes, Mbappe. Headed away by Cristiano Ronaldo, who's happy to come back and do the defensive duties there. Hold it from distance, it's finally going to go in for him. J.R.A. Lyon back in the game at 3-3. Free -free. And we're on for another extra time. Since we've been watching, it's been all J.R.A. Lyon in this game, and the boys are going rowing. <laughs> and they're rowing to extra time at this rate, Richard. Back to the drawing board for Astorata. And you said it perfectly. It has been coming. It has been all been J.R.A. All Lyon. Lyon. Yeah. And Holly just picking it up on the edge of the box, finding that top right corner. Rude. You said it best, Richard. 59 or 49 spots separate these two on the Global Series rankings. A massive tournament for JRA Lion, especially as we I've said it again and again. We are running out of, of these Foot Champions yeah, Cups. There's only, there's only one more after this. You've run out of time if you're wanting to make the playoffs. It's as simple as that. Rastarata will certainly be there. And uh, he's in that sort of predicament, similar to Marcus Gomes, similar to a number of other players at this tournament, where if you have a good tournament in this one, you're probably looking at a grand final spot. Yeah. If you don't, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself at the playoffs. There we go. That was a chance, and 
Lucky enough, it was Hullet that finished that one. He did like two or three finesses before that, where Pelé had a shot blocked. He had a, an unbelievable El Tornado-esque try and finish there. I think it was Mbappe that hit the post as well. There's been chances for Jero Line, and finally, that defence caved in, and it was Jero Line that could pull himself a goal back. Will Rastarata try and build himself into one more attack, though? Added time to come. Of a total of two minutes, not long at all. He needs to get the ball going forward if he wants to try and create a chance. Alex Tellez as well, from FC Porto invoked. Will it be Jerry Lane potentially getting the final chance of the game? Be. Yeah, we're about to hit the 92nd minute. He's not even past the halfway line. There we go, we're going into extra time now. That's two rounds in a row, but extra time games. It was obviously Pinner against Lev Vinken. A penalty shootout needed to separate those two. And now we're going to go into another 30 in game minutes here. And I think we joined it at the right time, it's safe to say. Yeah, two shots, two shots on target for Rasta Rata in this game. Jerry Lyon being the more attacking of the two players. And certainly from what we saw, yep. Lyon was on top. There's 13 game minutes left now. Two hours for 15 for someone to go 2-0 and in Swiss style format. From someone to go, as I say, back to that drawing board where they're going to be one on one. They need to find themselves at least two wins more. Three wins send you through, of course. Three losses send you home. And of course, the, if you win, if you get if you get your three wins, you're jumping up closer to that prize pool. You're jumping up higher in the Global Series ranking points. As J.R. Land does come forward now. For me, it feels like Rasta's always been leading in this game. I think, speaking but, of the Swiss style, sorry. Speaking of the Swiss style, I feel like, given that we're playing a round of 16 game today, I think I'd rather go three and two. Uh, obviously, what, five, zero and two first, or no, three and two just in general. So the last game that I play is a high intensity game. I think carry over that momentum into my round of 16 game. People who might finish four and one or five yep. and zero oh, potentially could be a little oh, bit. Oh wow! Mbappe to Ronaldo. How's he missed that? Did he even take a deflection out for a corner? See on the replay there was Ronaldo. Did did Noy get something on that? What, what a did. save! Got a fingertip save on it. You can see Daryl Lund's reaction there. We'll come back and speak about the Swiss style any second after this attack has come in from Jero Line, which did so well to get the space for Mbappe. It was Mbappe to his savior now. It's two players out of the attack. Ball goes across the box. Hasn't changed to Cristiano Ronaldo. I think it was. Actually, Hullet that jumped up instead, though. And speaking about Swiss style format, I think, yeah, I completely agree on that. So you go two and two, you win your you win your, your fifth game, round five, then you go three and two, you're full of confidence going to round of 16 because you're playing round of 16 today. You're not sleeping on it and coming back for round of 16. Well, not only the confidence as well, but the intensity. That's one of the big things. Oh, nearly went in from Ronaldo at the back post there. The reason that a lot of players go five and oh or go... 7-0 and as it was last year and then lose the first round in the day after is because they're not used to that knockout almost-esque football, that tournament football. Added time to come any second now of this first half of extra time. Still nothing to separate these two and we are edging closer and closer to the dreaded penalty shootout. Unless J.R. Lyons got one more attack. I don't know why he did the drag back there. I don't think it was necessary. Go into that space he had. Instead of maybe going towards the basically the byline he was looking to go towards. That'll be half time though. You can see, as I said, two go behind him there. He'll just be supporting him. You see his stats. Really nothing from, from Rasta in the in yeah. the whole game. Rasta's it hit the post in that first half of extra time, but apart from that, uh, six shots, three shots on target, three shots and two on target for Rasta. And of course, we just heard there as well, you know, we're watching the first game and actually the first half of the second leg. The full-time score between Tex and Marcus going to the 4-1 victory to F2 Tex in that game. So he's going to be 2-0 and zero, and if there was not, if he wasn't feeling confident already, he's going to be feeling very confident here. Whether it's in Singapore, Atlanta, wherever in the world, give that man a console, whichever one, PlayStation or Xbox, it doesn't matter for the man. Yeah. And he will go and perform. I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of the, 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 the fixtures and the results from round two because there's some fascinating ties up there and as soon as this game's finished we will be going over to the couch where we're going to have the entire breakdown of round two we've got 50 more minutes of FIFA before that and will we be sending that breakdown before a, a penalty shoot out that'll be one way to throw it over 
Do you think Marcelo's always a starter? Yeah, I am. There's a couple of different options with Porto going through in the Champions League. There's going to be that upgrade, isn't there? Alex Tellers will then go up to Tell a... Tell you what. Pele. 88. That wasn't bad from Pele there. Talk about Marcelo in the second half, this attack does. It's about at the end. But yeah, it kind of Marcelo was kind of a, a starter for everyone. But then there's people that want to take that risk and, and use someone else. Well, people also look, can use a centre-back at, le at left-back on seven chemistry as well. You could put Varane out there. You could put... Someone in that defensive aspect yeah. over there, but Marcelo he also offers the five star skills, which no other fullback really does offer you in the attacking third. Well, someone needs to get an attack together because we are really going to be going to penalties. Five in game minutes left. Will there be one more goal to separate these two? Or are we going to go to five penalties? For each player, if we need to, to have five penalties, that is in case everyone misses every single one. Into the lottery, that can be a penalty shootout where it's all mind games there. We want a, a throw in, though. Yeah, a lottery, the perfect way to describe a penalty shootout. It's I want to go. Who can hold your nerve the better? First game, did finish two goals apiece. Second game, one all as we go into the last minute of extra time. Isabio. Casello was actually really forward there. Oh no, added time of two minutes. Rasta Arter's turn, and this will be his final opportunity as he gets a throw in now on the edge of the halfway line. Has to go forward. Everything has to be positive from him. Will it be Heartbreak Hotel for Jerry Lyon? Pull it. Can he play the overlap? I think it's your savior making the run. Alex Tellers all the way across to Ronaldo! What's the time to score? The man with the best jumping in this game, literally. Going forward, he can attack, he can finish, he can finesse, he can head. The list goes on. And there's a reason he's in that team for every single play. He had one more chance, Richard. And he's just literally taking it with both hands. Yeah, it came down the left-hand side, Alex Tellez. Delivered it to the back post, and that's the reason you're playing Ronaldo as a right cam, as a left cam, because the jumping on the full-back is just so one-sided. It's so in the attacking player's favour. That's why Ronaldo, that's why Mbappe... A, a jumping like this and the winning headers like this and that handshake right there is full time. Rasterata does extend his Swiss style record. See two coming over as well, giving him a good old pat. And that Ronaldo chance, last chance of the go. game. Rasterata wins. And so you see hard. what it means to so Jerry Lyon. Lyon there. Literally was the last tack of the game. He was probably thinking in his mind, a penalty shoot our ref. We're there, we've added time, but you always get one more chance, as you say, Rich. You always get one more big chance, and from you know, over the from from so much joy to heartbreak for the for the Spaniard there, who goes back to one and one now in Swiss style format, and has to look forward to games.